talking about this monotheism, tawheed, the faith or belief in oneness of Allah, I would want to make it clear that it has three aspects. The three aspects, aspects being oneness in the being of Allah, oneness in the worships of Allah, and third is oneness in the attributes of Allah. Now I'll be talking about all three of these one after the other. The first is oneness in the being of Allah. This is what Allah clearly announces in Surah Al-Ikhlas. The four verses of Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٌ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ Say, He is Allah, one and only one. Allah, the eternal absolute. He begets not, nor is He begotten. And there is none like unto Him. This is actually the belief in oneness of being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul huwa Allahu ahad is actually the oneness in being. What does it actually mean? That there, there has to be no partners to Allah. The basic concept of this monotheism in being is that the person would believe that Allah has no partners, no wise, no helpers, he doesn't have a spouse, a wife, no offsprings, sons or daughters. So when somebody starts associating the creations of Allah or the creator with him, like worshipping the moon, the sun and the stars, like the people during the prophethood of Asad Ibrahim salam, they had a huge Nanar God, the God of the moon. They had a huge Shamas God, the God of the sun, the sun God. And they used to worship the stars. Then people worshipping idols made of wood or idols made of idols made of stone, like the people of Mecca, they had they had 360 idols placed in Hainakaba. So this was what? Then worshipping trees, worshipping fire, the fire worshippers like the people in Persia. So this is all associating the creations of Allah with his, with the creator. And then the belief of certain followers of the prophets like the Jews or the Christians that their prophets were the sons of Allah or they were a part of Allah. As Allah mentions in Surah Tawbah, verse number 30, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ وَزَيْرِ بْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارُ وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارُ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ The Jews say that Uzair is a son of Allah and the Christians say that Christ is a son of Allah. This is a saying which just they are saying and they, they imitate what the unbelievers of the old period used to do and Allah curse, Allah's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. So the concept of the Christian community in saying Isa ibn Allah, that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, na'uzu billah summa na'uzu billah min zalik, was the son of Allah, or the concept of Trinity, concept of three gods, and the Jews saying Uzair ibn Allah, that Hazrat Uzair radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the son of God or like the Makans they used to believe that the angels are the daughters of Allah as Allah says in the verse 100 of Surah Al-Anam Allah says وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَقَاءَ الْجِنِّ وَخَلَكَهُمْ وَخَرَكُوا لَهُ بَنِينَ وَبَنَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ سُحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَمَّا يَثِفُونَ they make the jinns equal with Allah and though Allah has created the jinns and they falsely have no knowledge, attribute to him sons and daughters, praise and glory be to him for he is above what they attribute to him. 
then making humans or making the creations of Allah as a part of Allah. Allah says in Surah Az-Zuhra, verse number 15, وَجَعَلُوا لَهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ جُزْءٌ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَقَفُورٌ مُبِينٌ They attribute to some of his servants as a share with him. Truly is man clearly unthankful. So, I repeat now, if I sum up, what is the faith in oneness of Allah is to think never, never, ever to associate the creations with Allah. Creations being associated with Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the angels are the daughters of Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the prophets are the sons of Allah or a part of Allah will be polytheism in the in being with Allah. <coughs> the second the second aspect of oneness of Allah is oneness in worships of Allah. How can we understand this? That when a person embraces Islam and says, La ilaha illallah, then this is actually a pledge of the bondsman. This is actually the covenant to stick on the faith of oneness of Allah. Then when we, when we say, while narrating Surah Al-Fatiha in our Salah or otherwise, when we say, This is also a pledge which announces that we will worship no one other than Allah. Allah makes us announce and highlight this concept as Allah says in Surah An'am, verse number 162 and 163, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنُّسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ قُلْ سَيْ Announce, tell that all my salah, my sacrifice, my life and death is for the sustainer of the worlds. He has no partners. I am commanded to be the first to submit to his orders. So this is the worship, oneness in worship of Allah. And this is exactly what we have been taught to say when we say in we sit in the tashahud of our salah and we say, Attahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat. All my all my verbal, my physical, or my monetary, all my oral, my bodily, or my fiscal worships are for Allah. So now, the concept of Iya Kana Budu is basically in two forms. It actually relates to two forms and states of mind. Number one, that by saying this and by believing and having faith, in the oneness of Allah as worship, we mean what? That we will worship Allah and only Allah, number one. Number two, we will worship only for Allah. We will worship, number one, we will worship only Allah and only Allah. And number two, we will worship only for Allah. Worships can be physical worships like salah, offering salah, fasting, remembrance or zikr, recitation of Quran, migration or hijrat, jihad, and then performing hajj has a component of physical worship as well. And then worships are monetary worships, like paying the zakat and paying charity in the way of Allah, and then, then spending for jihad. And again, I repeat, hajj has a monetary as well as a physical component of worship. And then spiritual worships, like the fear of Allah, piety, taqwa, then remembrance, remembrance of Allah or zikr, gratitude to Allah, that is shukr, and then dependence on Allah, Reliance, independence, or trust on Allah, that is tawakkul. These are all spiritual worships. 
Now, all these forms of worships will only be for Allah and of Allah. That is exactly what Allah orders in Surah Fusilat, verse number 37, where Allah says, لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا القمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلق حنا إن كنتم إياه تعبدون Do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who has created them. And if it is him you wish to serve. So, worshipping for Allah, the Salah will be for Allah. As Allah says in Surah Hajj, verse number 77, Ya amanu wasudu wa'budu rabbakum khayran la'allakum tuflahoon. La'allakum tuflahoon. O believers, you bow down, you prostrate, and you worship your sustainer, and you do good deeds so that you may be their successors. So all the salah, all the fasting, all the performing of hajj and spending of zakat and spending of all forms of charity will be in the path of Allah and for Allah. Dedication, ablation, bowing, offering sacrifices should be all for Allah. Supplication, lahu da'watul haqq. Supplication, seeking protection, a'udhu billah. Repentance, Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimeen. Trust, reliance, hasbi Allah la ilaha illahu. Hasbun Allah ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal wakil. This is all the oneness of the worships of Allah. And then in the oneness of worship, after all these forms of worship, the obedience of Allah. Obedience will only be of Allah. Submission, surrendering will be for Allah. What does that mean? What does that exactly means is that we realize and we announce that if the desires of our soul, the desires of our soul, the orders are the wishes of our family, our spouse, our children, the traditions or the customs of our society and of our community or the laws, the regulations of our country. They, they, are, they abide by the orders of Quran and Hadith. They abide by the orders of are the commandments of Quran and Sunnah, then we will abide by them. We will obey them. We will accept them. But if in any form, all of the explained above, which I've explained, they clash, they negate, they oppose, or they are contrary to the orders of or the commandments of Quran or Sunnah or Hadith, then we will not abide obey or accept them this is the worship or the obedience of Allah only as Allah says in Surah Furqan verse number 43 have you ever seen a person have you ever seen a person who has taken as his own desires he has taken his own desires as his God, as his Allah. What does that mean? That means that we are supposed to obey Allah. But when what our heart starts desiring for, we start obeying that and leave the commandments and the orders of Allah. This is making our souls, this is making our, our own self as what? Our desires as an Allah. And then the second thing of oneness of worship is that the worships, all the worships would only be for Allah. They will be only for Allah. The purpose of any of the physical or the monetary or the spiritual worships would not, would not 
be in any form other to please Allah, to save ourselves from his punishment, to save ourselves from his hellfire, to save her ourselves from his wrath, the purpose of all our bodily or our verbal worships will we neither be to please or to impress people around us, nor would it be to gain the worldly repetitions, the fame, the popularity, or the worldly successes or gains. The purpose would be just to seek Allah's pleasure. No worldly gains or interests whatsoever. Prophet ﷺ was heard asking and telling the companions that shouldn't I inform you of an evil deed which is even more immense and gross and intense than the faction of the Jal or the Antichrist? They said, please do so. The Prophet ﷺ said, concealed polytheism. And then he was asked that what does it mean? Prophet ﷺ said that if a person stands up and starts praying and he notices that somebody is looking at him and then in this condition he just prolongs his salah like prolonging the the raku the prolonging the prostration of the sajda or the qiyam just because he wants to impress the person this is concealed polytheism this salah will not be for a light will be for impressing the person <laughs> 